Alrighty, back again. And this time we have a pretty quick one, but a kind of cool one. In order to determine uh, self-inductance, let's jump in. The statement reads, find the self-inductance per unit length of a long solenoid of radius R carrying N turns per unit length. All right. Well, let's be careful again that we know about the quasi-static approximation, which of course we know that from uh, plenty of times dealing with solenoids. But nonetheless, uh, we see that the inductance was equal to the mutual inductance uh, times I, the current, uh, and that's how we found flux. But with the flux, what we see is that if we just want self-inductance, we just replace M with L since we're being mutual within ourselves, so we just get self-inductance. So if we want L, what we do is divide the flux by the current. Again, nothing really new. Uh, if, a, if for a solenoid, the flux would be uh, through a single turn, since we're going to have to take this one turn at a time. You know, of course, we have a circle because it's a solenoid. And then uh, we'll just multiply by every turn there. So again, here's the math of how to break that out, just so you see it. So you have mu naught ni pi r squared for the flux through a single uh, turn. Okay. Now, if we have length L, okay, well, we know there's going to be in L such turns per length L. So we just multiply that to find the total flux. And we see that you get mu naught n squared L i pi r squared. Pretty convenient. So if we want the self-inductance per unit length, what we have to do is find, uh, we change uh, L to uh, make it uh, inductance density, I guess you could say. But what it is is L per, or inductance per L, the length. So we see that that's this phi over I times L, and we see that I L cancel in both the numerator and denominator quite conveniently. And so we're left with the self-inductance per unit length of mu naught n squared pi r squared. Pretty nice. Pretty easy.